Okay. Uh, we were waiting a few more to see if we could get people. We have established quorum, but we do not have the two thirds here today to uh, vote on constitutional amendments. So we're not going to be able to see those today. Um, we're going to try again either next week or maybe after uh, after break, sir. Uh, just point of information about the election code changes. Those are actually contained within the bylaws. Too. Okay. Um, so we're so those are bylaws. We have to advertise them for two weeks. So that's kind of worse for us then. So. Uh, we're going to then announce these, that these are going to be advertised. You got the notice this week. Um, let's see the way we can wave this. Uh, we're going to have to vote on it first thing after break. So we're going to advertise them here, and then we'll vote on the, the pieces that we can. Uh, so for our first order of business, we are going to go ahead and approve the minutes. When those are being upgraded or uploaded to the box every week, so you guys go ahead and review those on your own time. We just kind of expect you to review them before you come here if you'd like to review them for yourself. But uh, we're just going to go ahead and approve those for the uh, the week as long as there's no changes, no motions to change them from last week. None heard? Okay. All in approval or all in favor of approving the minutes for last week, say aye. 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 All opposed? All abstain? All right, guys have it. All right. For our next order of business, we're going to actually go ahead and uh, review the resolution to create a functional archive of IUSA and IUST resolutions. Um, so basically these are just, it's just a request for members for us to go ahead as officers and try to get these all better compiled and organized. Uh, so with the passes resolution, we'll, we'll get to work in doing that. Uh, so now we got the schedule up. It's very, it's very brief, I'll read it here. Whereas currently IUSC archives of past resolutions are scattered and incomplete. Members of IUSC do not have access to a complete list of past resolutions, making it hard for reference and enforcement. Whereas the student body is unable to see the work and resolutions IOC has passed, let it be resolved that there should be a complete archive after we're finished uh, of all resolutions passed by IUSA and IOC Congress, and that this archive be easily accessible on IOC website and navigable to all members of IOC and the student body. Let it be resolved this archive be maintained and kept up to date with new congressional resolutions in a timely manner. So when we do this, we'll go ahead and reorganize the box and we'll send everyone else a link on the, to the box on the email list to meet this if this is passed. Sir? Speaker, um I got that next. Um, okay. Yeah, thank you. Uh, ma'am? Um, I have the archives from as late as 1999 and full since 2004. Okay. We're missing the most recent four years, but I have pretty much every single congressional resolution in there. Okay. It's as simple as putting it in a zip and sending it to, to Blue or maybe somebody, or I can put it directly in the box. Gotcha. If you make it publicly available, I can just take two minutes to make that folder. I can put all of those on the website. Okay, great. So we will get that. And I also have a physical copy. That's my mess of a binder here. Of everything we've done this semester. So over the winter break, I'll get to work and start doing uploads of all this so that everyone can have it available to them digitally. Uh, so all in favor of, sorry, is there any move to edit this resolution, actually? None heard? All in favor of passing congressional resolution number 18, 19, 13, resolution to create a functional archive, IUS and IUS resolutions. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? All abstain? I have it. The test. Okay, so we just need to get sign up and get him to sign it. And then uh, we also have. The finance committee was able to get together a budget that was uh, met the interests of the executive uh, team. So uh, this is already given us given to us. Uh, it was the same budget I believe we saw. I've reviewed it as well. And uh, unless there's a motion to have to send it to everybody. Um, I, I trust the chairman on, on the finance committee for that one. So uh, this is going to be a resolution just simply to approve the budget as is, as presented by the finance committee uh, for the executive team and, and all their branches and departments. Uh, so all in favor, and, uh, no motions to change it? None heard? All in favor of approving congressional resolution number 18-19-16, resolution to approve the 2018-19 ISG budget. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? All abstain? Ayes have Sweet. All right, so for the rest of our session, um, let's see. 
for the rest of our session, we are going to go ahead. I know the letter that we had out, ma'am. Sure. The letter? Yeah. I figured. Yes, yeah, so we're, we've allotted some time here. So this is a controversial topic that we uh, everyone wanted to speak to. So we've, we've made some time here regarding our letter from uh, the University of Pittsburgh. Um, we're going to go ahead and open the floor to debate on the letter. And uh, the floor is open. Well, could we have like two speakers? Two for, official speakers? Sure. You said two, we have two. Two for, two against, and like speaking time so it's you know, regulated. Who's so, your first speaker? Er, so, motion to set a 12 minute speaking time with uh, three minutes each, okay. two for, two against. Second, so anyone? I'll second that. Uh, yeah, we'll take a moment. I, I sent it out, but yeah, it's, it's important. It's going to lead to this debate, so I'll read it out here. Uh, this was a, a letter uh, in response to the shootings of the, uh, at the Tree of Life Synagogue in Squirrel Hill. Uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, this was given to the president, uh, Alex, and then he gave it to us. Um, the desire was for us to vote to comply and sign on with this message that we've received from the University of Pittsburgh. Uh, so basically this letter is from Pittsburgh to their Pennsylvania legislators. Sir. Sure, we'll add to the speakers list for them. So the letter, again, this is from the University of Pittsburgh to their legislators. To our representatives and lawmakers, on October 27, 2018, 11 people were murdered at the Tree of Life Synagogue in Squirrel Hill, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Armed with an AR-15 and three handguns, the shooter injured six more people, four of whom were police officers. This act of hatred has deeply affected the city of Pittsburgh. In these trying times, it is imperative that we uphold our core values and welcome people of all races, religions, identities, and ideologies. It is in this very spirit that we write to you, our elected officials and lawmakers, urging you to be proactive in preventing the reoccurrence of such acts. Today, it is more important than ever that not one more terrorist, domestic or otherwise, can get their hands on weapons that enable their brutal tendencies. Therefore, we, the undersigned, college and university students and student governments, call for stricter regulation on the sale of assault weapons, including but not limited to expansion of background check requirements to be comprehensive, stringent, and intrusive, Closure of the gun show loophole through the revision of the gun show, gun show loophole closing act of 2017, H.R. 1612 introduced March 2017. The immediate federal banning of bump stocks and any other device that allows for legal weapons to become illegal. It is time for our lawmakers to put aside partisanship. This is not a matter of Democratic or Republican affiliation, but rather of safeguarding the most fundamental principles our nation was built upon. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Those with malice in their hearts who aim to strip others of their fundamental right to life must not have the ability to get their hands on lethal firearms. The city of Pittsburgh has come together to support the Jewish community, uh, community and combat anti-Semitism. Thousands have attended vigils and made donations. However, action must also be taken by our lawmakers to create policy which actively prevents future tragedies. As young Americans, our generation has never known this country without gun violence. Beginning with Columbine in 1999, our reality has always been contaminated by this play. Virginia Tech, Newtown, Charleston, San Bernardino, Orlando, Las Vegas, Parkland, Pittsburgh, Thousand Oaks. There are many more atrocities that we do not have the space to list. Shootings like these have become far too frequent headlines. Thoughts and prayers alone will no longer suffice. You cannot remain silent any longer. We demand change. Sincerely, the University of Pittsburgh Student Government Board. That is the letter in its entirety. And the University of Pittsburgh is asking us to sign on to that message in full uh, as, they, as they, represent, or they present this to their legislators in Pennsylvania. Um, so we're going to go ahead and have four formal speakers that can come up and have three minutes apiece. And uh, Mr. President, you can be the first, if you'd like to come speak. Point of inquiry, is he going to count as a four or is he dispatched? Sorry? Is he going to count as part of the four people or is he dispatched? We'll just have him to introduce since he uh, brought this to us and we'll have four after this. We've got plenty of time. Hi, everyone. So um, these letters come really kind of frequently to um, IUSG and like IU student government as a whole. Um, these letters aren't particular to any kind of one issue, but just more um, to your point, it's not going to go to specifically Pittsburgh, but it will go to the um, national legislature. So anyone that we see fit, so potentially Indiana senators and um, representatives um, in the House and U.S. Senate. Um, last year there was one that was or was it two? Yeah, last year there was one that was from the University of Virginia student body president that condemned the Charlottesville Act. 
Um, that one gained a lot of traction. There was a lot of movement behind it. Um, so this one was not out of the blue. I'm not urging you all to sign it. I'm just saying I would have sent it. So if you all want to debate and then sign it, um, it's totally on you all. Um, so these combined letters have a lot of weight when you have the university student governments um, all sign on. For example, in the Charlottesville one, there was over 50 student body presidents from universities all the way from small community colleges all the way up through large public institutions. Um, holds various weight among various different groups, but it is just something in solidarity and in support. It's not something of, um, usually something of immense debate and hot topics, otherwise that many people wouldn't sign on to it, is what I'll say. Um, definitely up for interpretation though, um, that is just kind of the background of a lot of these letters and how uh, many of them get presented to the Congresses of other universities. So if anyone has any questions, I'm, I'm more than happy to take them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, so in this Pittsburgh letter, I believe, um, this was me looking at it, I think it was sent on Thursday. Um, so it's just like a, a larger Google Excel sheet. Um, I want to say Stanford had signed it, Washington State had signed it, University of Oregon had signed it, um, Rhodes College had signed it. So there's, I'm sorry, I'm just like, Quite a few members of the Big Ten have um, been debating this. I'm going to give a message to all the Big Ten student body presidents, and it's been a hot topic of are you going to sign it, are you not going to sign it, what's your school going to do? Um, so it's not uncommon, um, but people are just more in the same process as we're in right now. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Do we have any volunteers for our first speaker? Or you had two that's already scheduled here to speak? All right, Victoria, if you wanted to speak. I know that many people in my school feel the same way about signing this kind of letter, that we are in support. Ooh. Um, I'm nervous. Uh, we should sign the letter. Uh, actually, we have one more before we pass the. Oh, yeah. Do you want to speak? Yeah, this is yeah, four. The four. I know, but I was just saying, we want to have like. Switch them up. Okay. Is are you offer are you offering a a negative chance? Okay, go ahead. And no one has to be shy here, you know. And uh, Victoria did fantastic. We're all we're all in this together. Honestly, we really are. So. My name is Jerry Copeland. I uh, I personally think that we should condemn the actions of Pittsburgh, but. This is also my first presentation of the day, so sorry. Um, so what I would really like to point out is that the issues which it formally states in the letter, sorry, I thought you guys were up behind me, uh, are the three expansion of the background check, which is a state issue, which over 80% of Americans have already 
already stated through polls that they support the political regardless of what partisan or what party they represent or believe in. Um, as well as the closure of the gun show this poll that also has a massive um, majority of Americans came high, especially on campus too. There was a poll done and students said that that was one of the biggest support. Uh, and the immediate federal banning of bump stocks is something that Trump actually recently spoke on in support of. So I just think this is something that is actually already being talked about both nationally and on our campus. And as uh, Victoria already brought up, it's we're not immune. Um, we had IU students in a room where someone had started shooting. They might not have been on campus, but that was our community. Um, so I believe by signing on to this, not only are we condemning the terrorist activity that happened in Pittsburgh, the two students here are from that area and felt that deeply, but we're also saying that this cannot continue on our campus regardless if we have our gun crew killed. Any other folks that wish to speak? No? Okay. Is there any other motions for debate? Close it? Oh, we're, yeah, sure. We'll move to discussion. I'll second that. So uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and move to discussion. Does anyone else like to discuss this? We have an open question and answer.
um, people that were in support of more restrictive gun laws and people that were in support of less restrictive gun laws and was able to basically come to the middle ground and say, hey, these 10 policy points are things that we agree on that no matter what your party is will make kind of like gun ownership more safe and better for everyone in the United States. Um, I don't think that you shouldn't sign on support of the Pittsburgh letter, but I'm just saying there are definitely more resources and other letters that have put information out there that you all could benchmark your own piece of legislation if you want to often. Um, if there's contention around specific pieces of the legislation, that doesn't mean we all can't come to consensus and find that there's a, a, a common sense gun legislation or common sense reform gun legislation that we can come to agree of, uh, come to agreement on, excuse me. Um, but rather disagree on specific points of one piece of legislation that we all didn't even take the time to write. So I just uh, putting that out there for, for information and discussion going forward. Any further discussion? Uh, Sir. One other thing is that uh, my father is a police officer and also a responsible, respectable gun owner. We have, growing up, we had many guns in my family and my father is a police officer. He's seen victims of gun violence of these three points. I've debated these things with him before. And just of the sheer violence and terror that he's seen as a police officer having to pick up the pieces, the bodies, the just the terrible people who can obtain these weapons using like a gun show loophole and things of that nature. Whether or not this necessarily prevent tragedy in the future of the nature of like uh, Charlottesville or Orlando or something like that. Whether or not those these are still common sense reforms that can still improve our society. And so my father, you know, a conservative police officer, he supports these things and so it truly shows that this really isn't a a partisan issue. This is really something we can all come together on on that issue. Thank you. Any other discussion points? Okay, I'll second that. Uh, we're gonna close discussion. Um, something that I heavily, heavily thought about. I'm going to speak to this really, really briefly. Um, to be upfront, I'm still not going to hold a vote on this letter. Uh, and the reasons for this are, and uh, to not in all agreement with the officers here, it was a decision I made myself. Um, I, I believe there was not a reason, kind of echoing some of the words of the, of, the, of the president here, is that we don't have to copy paste, put the words of, of Pittsburgh into our mouths. We can, we can write our own message. The biggest issue I think of our generation right now is gun violence. It's terrible. It's, it's hurting a lot of people. That's something everybody can agree on. And uh, so I think um, one thing I, I definitely struggled with in our last kind of heated debate when we were talking about the uh, the uh, the pro-Israeli legislation, uh, something that got brought to me afterwards that kind of affected me was like, well, what if there were pro-Palestinian folks in our in our campus that we have just totally isolated? And I really feel that. So my biggest thing as speaker is I'm not wanting to allow myself to become the speaker of the majority. Whether whatever majority that is. So if there are any conservative students in this school, I'm sure there are at least a handful, uh, we, we need to represent them as well. So what we can do is I don't want to take on this letter in its entirety, but there are many things that we can agree on here. We can uh, certainly condemn the issues that what happened, the gun violence that occurred in Pittsburgh. It's terrible. We can uh, make our own action plan if we think so for Indiana that works for us to combat gun violence. If that's increased background checks or whatever we'd like to see, then let's, let's talk about that. We'll issue our own resolution saying what works for us, and we can entice other students and other schools to do the same. Um, and let's take any partisanship out of this altogether and write the resolution that we can stick to that is across the aisle. Sir? Can we go order for the parliamentarian? Can the speaker do this? I sure can. Uh, I mean, he showed me an updated version of the bylaws that said that he can consider whether or not to what legislation to be put on the floor. But Section I, 4 of the bylaws requires the speaker to approve any legislation before it goes to the parliamentarian, and then he's required to approve before it goes before Congress. But like that that version of the bylaws was not on the box, so I was not aware of that. So I don't know if that is legitimate at all. So, so you said Section 4 or Article 4? Section 4. Again, despite discussing Bylaws and constitutionality, there's not going to be a scenario here where we force this letter down everyone's throat in Congress. So it's, it's not going to happen. I'm not holding it. So for inquiry, I'm looking at the IUSA bylaws from the website, and there is no section labeled by numbers. They're all A, B. Are you talking about article? 
the part of the bylaws determines congressional officer, section four, section four A, speaker of the house. It goes into I two, three, four, number eight. That that version of the bylaws isn't on the box, so that's why there's a okay. disconnect. So, so that, yeah, that's why we don't know if that's the that's version that's on the website. Which if it's on the So we will, uh, what we're gonna do moving forward is I'm gonna put this onto the Student Life Committee and we're gonna create a new resolution that's ours and that we can choose what language we're gonna put in here. Uh, despite, I'll get with you in just a second, Mr. President. I followed up on the original letter with this and it really does, despite what the President says, it goes to a Google Doc where they just ask for you to put your name in, your student, your, sorry, your school name in to say, hey, we fully submit this or support this documentation in entirety. It's not asking for anything other than us just to add our name to their list so they can give it to the legislators in Pennsylvania and say, hey, look how many people we got on board. You should feel pressure to change these things. This is a, a nationally you know, controversial topic and being inherently controversial means there's gonna be two very honest and real sides to it that both sides feel like they're right. And us denying to take on this letter and entirely does not make it a pro-conservative or pro-liberal thing. We can write our own and make it pro whatever we want to be, is what I'm trying to say. Um, so, Mr. President, you wanted to speak? Um, sorry, two things. The more updated thing, was it was a Google Doc that's been changed to a change.org petition, just for clarification. The, I mean, there's no, they always just start with the preamble, you know, there's no, like, identifier by them. So, is I'll have to give it to you, I'll have to give it to you shortly. Is it the bylaws that, like, the executive summer people gave you? Or no, it's not the uh, updated, those are, so those are in red, those are special. The name of the title of that section? Like I said, that it just starts with the preamble, so I have to get with the, uh, I'll have to check to see which, which version or whatever it is. Again, like I said, there does not exist a, I know we're trying to, everyone's trying to play papers and documentation with me here. There does not exist a constitution or bylaws document that says you all can, can trump this and we can hold a free willy congressional session and vote on whatever you'd like. That is the sole purpose of the speaker is to organize these matters. Now, it's in your guys' right. After the break, we will be holding elections for new speakers. If you don't agree with me, it's your right to vote me out. Mr. President? I, I would just argue that the ones on our update are the, or excuse me, the ones on our website are the ones that we currently operate under. Hmm. Don't know which ones you have, but the past eight was the one that was pointing out that these are the current ones on our website. I'm almost hot and belly can double check because she has the website. We were revised January 2017, and this is the most recent update we have, and we know that for sure, because ownership of this document was never transferred over, so whoever has ownership of this document doesn't have an IU account anymore, so we don't have access to this, to this GIF doc anymore, which means no one could have changed that, or uploaded them, or brought them. Thank you. Uh, so one thing I'll do to make sure we're, we're following parliamentary procedure is uh, I'll make sure I get the absolute latest for the both, make sure there's no, not been any changes to them, get them directly from the executives if we need to, and that we can review those in the next week. If there exists a loophole for you guys to uh, force my hand on this, by all means, you're right. Well, having received this new, that this is what the bylaws that we operate under, can we motion to reopen discussion to see if we conduct a vote today at the end of the semester? And it's relevant that's out of order we're not going to be able to as i said you're not going to be able to hold a vote or force a vote from me here um, in regards to uh, pass this vote on whether or not the uh, iusa website bylaws is the one that we operate under versus the bylaws that you have i think this might be out of order yeah so again we will review the the, res the bylaws resolution i get it everyone here has a has a feeling on these papers if there exists an opportunity for you to, to force this vote by all means, we'll, we'll present that this next week, but it's not going to happen today. Miss. For reference, the 2010 bylaws um, start with a preamble, and the 2017 bylaws do not have a preamble. Okay. I'm looking on the IUSA archives right now. Okay. I'm looking for discrepancies and where they could have come from. Mine has a preamble in the front, so I got my hands on old bylaws then. So. Could we motion to have a non binding vote on this document just to see where Congress stands on it? Yeah, that's, that's totally appropriate. Would you like to do that? 
I'll second that, actually. So uh, as the state understand where everyone stands here in Congress, uh, if you were in favor of signing on with this um, documentation, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? All abstained? Aye. 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 Okay. All right, thank you very much. So, I mean, it's good to know if, if everyone feels very strong about this, and I'll research, uh, I'll research the, the bylaws and see if, if there's a way for you to force my hand on this. Otherwise, I'm going to try to make a resolution in this next week uh, if the Student Life Committee that I chair would like to help with that. And uh, we can try to make one that meets everyone's interests. Sir? Uh, we do, unless everyone is really busy with finals and stuff and needs to cancel it. That's going to make this issue a little struggle. <laughs> I think I got a final issue for you. So then, uh, uh, okay, you know what? In that regard, I want I want uh, I want everyone to feel heard. We'll hold a vote. Okay, so we're going to hold a vote. Do you approve the uh, legislation? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, since we're not going to be holding this next session, this will be our last session then for the uh, until until after break. So with that in mind, since we had an overwhelming for approval, if we want to fall into this, this is, sir. It's a resolution. It just requires my approval, and then it requires the parliamentary approval. So now it is going before Congress. So we will vote on it then. If we wish to uh, adopt the stance, then Congress can do so. So all in favor of approving this documentation, signing on with the University of Pittsburgh in entirety, say aye. Aye. All opposed? All abstained? Aye. All right, ayes have it. So yeah, we're gonna have to. Uh, so I was actually gonna move to dismiss them in the sense that, like, so this whole next semester is just gonna pretty much be entirely us getting the uh, the constitution and the, and the bylaws figured out. Especially obviously since we got issues like this, or we need to have a, like a, something to do. Um, so with that said, actually, I'm just gonna motion to dismiss. Actually, I don't need a motion. I'm just gonna dismiss them both. They're ad hoc. So I'll dismiss both those committees. Um, we have the new committee, the financial committee, and the uh, uh, diversity committee. For the diversity committee uh, chair, so this is something we can deal with after break, but we need to, um, I'm going to let them just elect their own chairperson and give that person to me, and then I will just appoint them as the, as the chairperson. One second, miss. And uh, we're also going to be, after this session, also I'll put out real quick if we got the time, we're going to have a closed steering committee session. So if you are a chairperson of any of the committees, I need to meet with you. Uh, you as well, sir, even though you're ad hoc committee. Um, so all those chairperson come come with me, and we're going to discuss uh, dismissing some Congress folks that have not arrived and have had poor attendance issues. So with that in mind, we're going to be having a lot of openings over the winter break for some congressional session or for congressional seats. Uh, a point that we've had is that the diversity committee does not have a very diverse, you know, a lot of congressmen on it. So if if you can, like now is the time for us to reach out to like Congress folks, try to get people on these committees, try to reach out to maybe folks at cultural centers or, or whatnot, so we can get a more diverse, uh, you know representation here in Congress. That's a uh, people that's something that a lot of people want to say, but a lot of people haven't said. You know what I mean? So let's let's try our best to get this kind of representation that we want and have a multi diverse uh, Congress. And and then anyone, if you know anyone that wants to be in Congress, tell them to apply over break. I'll be doing all the applications. We're gonna have a lot of seats to fill. So it goes me. Uh, otherwise those those committees are dismissed. Is there anyone that wants to be on the speakers list? Missed. That's right, sorry about that. Okay. I think the issue was I didn't get to work until it was on bylaws. I totally own that problem. One of the big issues was I was trying to get with the executives and I thought I would do like the, the behest of the work and then give it to you guys just like for review. I took on way too much work. So what I, what I think needs to be done to be better is just to do like a slow review process over the next semester, which is everyone in Congress. Yeah, the issue was just a lot of people that I was reaching out to help for in Congress here. We do this once a week. You know, People come here, they want to do an hour and they want to go home. 
So if you, uh, one second, Miss, if you have an interest and you want to take a, a larger role in helping us edit these bylaws of the Constitution, please, next semester, step up. We, I could use you. I just couldn't do it all myself. So I'm sorry about so that. Sure, absolutely. I'd love to get your changes from you. That'd be fantastic. Um, yeah, if you've already gotten the bulk of that work done, we, we will use it for sure. Um, yes. Sure. Yeah, I can do that. I, I definitely need to do that because that has been a uh, we haven't really understood how, what spots we have open as it has been a bit difficult issue, sir. Uh, so we're not changing the number of seats we have. That, sorry if that, if that confused everyone. I'm asking, like, if you know anyone that, you know, that volunteers at cultural centers or if you know anyone of, di of diverse ethnicities or folks that want to be involved in Congress, I mean, I'm just coming out here and saying it because this is what everyone's been asking of me, reach out to them, you know, ask them to come be a part of Congress, and uh, let's try to get a more diverse Congress. I'm told specifically we have a diversity committee of white people, so let's change that then if people got a problem with that. So... Um, is there another question? Okay. Miss. Yes. Full information. Um, just to put some context to the urgency behind the constitutional changes, um, per the current constitution, the Congress may not amend bylaws governing IUSA, IUSC elections um, during the four weeks before elections. So if you're planning on hopefully getting a constitution done and then tackling the bylaws, um, the constitution would have to That'd be fine. So we're, we're meeting back up in January. So then this are already advertised now. So technically the whole break would count. So we could first thing uh, after we get back in January would be to vote on the uh, the bylaws notes. And that will allow the elections folks to be good. We'll hold another one of those be involved referendums. They'll be set to go. And then we have the whole semester to work on. Yeah, only a constitutional amendments only required just us. Bylaws still count as a uh, resolution, so it needs to be approved by the president as well. Um, okay, I think that's pretty much it. If anyone has any last second, this can be our last meeting then till, for break. So if anyone has any pressing issues, um, none heard yet. Again, so I'll put this out. It's our last session, especially considering there was a lot of disagreement with you on my decision. Again, I hope you all will respect the decision why I made it, and I just want to best represent everyone. If you don't uh, or appreciate that. Uh, we will have to have a new speaker election and the first uh, meeting of after break. Uh, I have to put that out there. So if you want to run, by all means, I have not made a decision whether I will be rerunning. Uh, I lost quite a few family members this semester. That's why I was gone this last week. Uh, so I ask that you just bear with me. I'm uh, trying to get back to a new normal, so I'm going to see if I might be rerunning. So thank you, everybody. If that is it, this is our last session. I hope you guys have a fantastic winter break. And with that said, it's been an honor. See you guys next uh, semester. Adjourn. Thank you.